All right, so welcome to Break On Through, a thought leadership development process. My name is Jared Brick. I'm the founder of Brickhouse Media Co. I'm based out in Santa Cruz, California, which is, if you don't know it, about 70 miles south of San Francisco and over the hill from Silicon Valley. And today we're going to dive into what I believe is the best process to develop. Uh, what I've been doing since 2013 to establish yourself as an emerging thought leader in any niche, any age, at any stage in your career. A little bit more about me. I have an MBA from a graduate school called Presidio Graduate School based in San Francisco. Uh, the focus is on sustainable business, people, planet, and profit for everything that you do. Uh, I also created some other brands and projects and um, different aspects of Brickhouse Media since 2013, which is Zen Hustlers. Zen Hustlers is a platform for entrepreneurs to get resources so they can stay in balance because a lot of us are out of balance as entrepreneurs. Uh, I've also created uh, what's called Grip Media, which is building uh, media studios in co-working spaces and office spaces and other shared spaces. So it allows people to create more media anywhere they're working uh, at the time. And in 2018, we built a course called Break On Through. It is a six week course. You can see the image above. That is me on the course through the six weeks. I'm the guide and the host. And we have four other experts on the course and you'll hear more about the course at the end of this today if you, anyone wants to join the course, but today's really giving you the nuts and bolts of what do we do in the six week program and what are those key aspects to help you develop as an emerging thought leader in any space, any niche, any stage in your career and in any age. I've worked with six-year-olds and I've worked with 80-year-olds um, throughout my career. Uh, if you wanna follow us, you can see at the bottom of the screen on most social channels, we're BH Media CO, which uh, Brickhouse Media Co. And we also, used to, uh, also like to use the hashtag thought leadership or break on through or BH Media Co as a hashtag. What we do at Brickhouse Media is multimedia marketing. So what does that mean? We do data analytics. So we break down what's working on campaigns, what's working on your channels. We create media. We build social channels. We build websites, visual-based websites, not e-commerce websites. Um, we do our own video productions. We do photography. We build email and other strategic processes into your business. So it's a very holistic model. I used to just do the photo and video part, uh, the green and red in the middle. And after I got my MBA, I added all the other aspects to the business so that you had one person, one company to deal with. Um, it is me and I have a variety of contractors and people I work with that you don't have to work with 10 people to get all these different aspects of your business built and done and running. We typically work with clients for about six to 12 months on average, and then they have such a great process running, they either train a staff or hire a virtual assistant or someone else, an assistant internally to the company if they're, so, excuse me, if they're solopreneurs. So that's what we've been doing since 2013. Who do we work with? Uh, sustainability professionals, uh, change makers, small business owners, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, professionals, startup companies, blockchain companies, entrepreneurs and speakers and coaches. Those are typically the clientele that we work with. If you fall into one of those areas, then it's probably a good fit to work with us. My goal, the entire reason why I exist is I wanna see you on that stage. And that stage could be TED, that stage could be a local uh, community organization, that stage could be online webinars. It doesn't really matter where the stage is. I just wanna see you on that stage and the key to being a thought leader is that there's people looking and watching and listening to you. That is the difference between an expert to a leader. I'm sure a lot of the people sitting in the blue audience are experts in their respective field. Until they step on the stage, they're not leaders. That is the difference in my mind between an expert and a leader. You can be an amazing expert in a lot of different things, but until people are following you, listening to you, reading about you and the things that you're sharing, that's when you step into a leadership role because you're guiding people down a path to wherever you'd like them to go. Uh, we do that by leveraging media and syndication tools, which I'll get into, which allows you to be in many more places at once instead of just one room at a time. 
Gone are the days of obtaining a PhD, authoring a book, traveling and speaking to be considered a thought leader. Those are the major benefits after you start your journey into this. And again, you can start at any age in any stage. I have literally worked with six to eight year olds who are very passionate children about a topic or a cause. Um, one of them was Milo. He wanted to stop. Uh, he was seven years old at the time I met him and started working with him. He wanted to stop all restaurants in Vermont from selling plastic straws. He thought plastic straws were bad. He started doing a little research with his parents and he realized, I wanna start this. He actually became known at a national level for this and helping restaurants all over across the country ask you, do you want a straw and not by default giving you a plastic straw? On average, about 500 plastic straws go into waste every year in garbage and landfills. So you can start this at any age. And I've also worked with people at the end of their career who realized they had a passion for something and they wanted to change industries and they wanted to get into something completely different. Here's some of the actual benefits. So being a thought leader is not just a, it's not just a title. It's not just something you coin on yourself. These are the actual tangible benefits, getting new revenue opportunities and impact to change people's lives, changing your reputation, having more freedom and control in your career, and then collaborating with either business offers, book offers, speaking invitations, and all of these have been realized for every single client we worked with at different aspects of where they are in their career over their trajectory of working with us and moving forward even after working with us. And I love getting those stories back. It is so gratifying to hear these different benefits that they're getting in their careers that come back after we worked with them. We believe it's a six step process when you're getting started. Now, if you're further down the road and you've clarified some of these things, maybe you're at stage four and five and six and not one, but declaring your purpose, establishing your brand, building a uh, headquarters website, a brand website, even if it's just one page, um, creating content, syndicating that content, and then launching yourself on various platforms and channels so that you are now attracting an audience. So that is the steps. Let's be really clear, the world and work has changed. Many of us are working from home now, myself included. Um, I don't work out of an office space anymore. I may in the future. I have a mobile responsive uh, media van that we, I built during COVID so that we could actually respond on site uh, that's COVID safe. So the world has changed because of the pandemic. We may never go back to the exact way it was. Pretty sure we won't all go back to the way it was. So we really have to define ourselves. Where do we wanna work? How do we wanna work? Do we wanna work for ourselves? Do we wanna work for companies or contract or be a contractor? And define how do we wanna work in this new dynamic and paradigm that we're under. The first step is actually an exploration into this journey. If you're gonna become a thought leader in your respective area, you need to explore what does that mean for you? Um, what does it mean? Is it your time? Is the timing right for you right now to emerge into thought leadership? I want you to make an impact in your career. I want you to have an impact on people's lives and leave your mark with the work that you do. We spend so much of our lives working. And so to make a mark and to have a career trajectory that's gonna make an impact on people, we have to be bold and step into that leadership role into the spotlight. Even if it feels incredibly uncomfortable in the beginning, I guarantee the more that you do it like anything, it's a muscle that you build and you will get stronger at doing it. These are sort of the challenges. Um, the discovery is important because a lot of people, over 80% of people are disengaged at work and they're from different generations from millennials to Gen X, Z, I'm a Gen X uh, guy born in 75. And so there's a lot of apathy and disengagement at work where people are at now, even at good jobs. So this does not mean, and there's a statistic that if you make over 70,000, it does not make you any happier. You have to find gratitude in a different, or sorry, not gratitude, gratification in a different mechanism than at work only. Even if you're making over $70,000 a year, or I believe it's exactly $72,000 a year. So some of the benefits of actually discovering, well, what is my purpose? Why am I doing this work? And this is all related to work. Um, you can have a healthier life, a healthier heart, a more profitable business. You'll feel more rewarded and more fulfilled in the relationships that you have. 
And this came from planetpurpose.org, an organization that's actually a client of ours. Uh, Brandon Peel wrote the book, Planet, um, Planet on Purpose. And so these are some statistics that have been collected through that work. The second stage is building a personal and a business brand. So it does not have to be your personal name in the brand. Here is Lewis Howes and Brendan Bouchard, two mentors of mine, not clients, mentors. Um, they've built personal brands around their name. Now to be clear, they are also authors. And when people tend to become authors, they use their personal name as an author. Now they have also business brands that they've built around them too. So you can have both or you can have one based on your name. I'm Brickhouse Media, Jared Brick. When I speak, it's Jared Brick. When we uh, run clients through our company and work with clients, it's through Brickhouse Media as an organization, as an umbrella media organization. And you can see it's highly branded in the lower left corner of your screen. On every screen, we brand everything that we do. Um, we wanna be bold, we wanna stand out, you wanna find your voice. You wanna decide on what medium is right for you. Is it video? Is it writing? Is it speaking? Is it a mixture of some of those? Is it audio podcasting? And then you wanna develop a very clear persona. Who are you? How are you different? How is your voice different in the world than anyone else's voice? That's that persona that you develop. And to be clear, it does not have to be your personal persona. The way that I'm speaking now is a persona. It's not how I speak always to a friend or a relationship or my children. It is a professional business persona that you personify. And then you wanna create a culture of people or a tribe around that persona. And you wanna brand that here it's XYZ because I'm gonna have you name that persona when you develop your brand. Here's some respected thought leaders that I respect. Sir Richard Branson of the Virgin Group. He manages 300 businesses under the Virgin brand. It's not just airlines and other things. Um, he definitely stands out. He is one of the thought leaders in the entire space, not just travel with Virgin Atlantic and Virgin Airlines that most people know him for. Um, he's got a very clear personality. He's very bold and an adventurer. Um, he is focused on different niches. So he's tackled travel. He's also done gyms, boats, banking, mobile. He tried a soda company at one point. Um, he creates a very specific culture and vibe. It's fun, it's lively, it's young, it's vibrant, um, very colorful if you've ever flown on Virgin America flights or Virgin Atlantic flights. And his passion is very attractive. Most people I think are attracted to him because he's so passionate about whatever he does. And passion is a great thing. If you're passionate about something, I want you to, excuse me, share what you're passionate about always. One of the ways you can figure out what is your passion and what is your purpose in your work is starting with this book, Simon Sinek, Start With Why. If you haven't read it, it is a precursor to all the work that I do. Um, I want everyone I work with to have read this book and work with this book. He is an amazingly motivating guy, especially during all this. He's been great talking about how do we build teams? How do we build culture? Um, but I, essentially, most of us start with the what first, and that's the mistake. We go, I'm gonna build X product or X service, and that is actually a mistake. What you wanna start with is your purpose. Why am I even in this business? And then start with, well, how am I gonna deliver that purpose to people, make an impact, and then what is that exact product and service? So my purpose, just to be clear, is to empower emerging thought leaders by leveraging media. That is my purpose for business. How I do that is a variety of different ways. We have different services and products. I use a business consulting model as the process, as a consultant and a strategist, and also a media creator. And the what is the different products and services that my clients can purchase from us, either a service model, if maybe it's a video production, maybe it's just becoming a course subscriber or student, so there's a lot of different products that I can deliver that, but it all goes back to my higher purpose of having people step into thought leaders by leveraging media in different ways. So you can see everything relates back to that center of the target circle, your why. Your why is so important. We also want to figure out who, who is the brand you're representing and who are the people that you are going to serve. As you saw earlier, I can clearly distinguish who is the customer that I'm trying to attract. So where do they live and work? What do they like? How do they speak? How do they love people? Um, and what do they love? 
and who do they listen to as far as books, podcasts, authors, videos that they follow. If I can get in touch with those different things, then I can speak to them and they can identify with my brand immediately and your brand. So we have a branding exercise that we do in the course and through our client work that we help you go through this to clarify your target audience and your target demographic. Step three is crafting your online world. So everyone looks at the world through a worldview. And this is coming from a book through called uh, All Marketers uh, Are Liars or All Marketers Tell Stories by Seth Godin. He's an amazing writer. Uh, I've had the opportunity to speak with Seth. He's fantastic. He's one of the preeminent leaders on understanding marketing to tell a story. It's all story-based marketing. So you want to understand that the world and people see the world through a worldview they see that worldview based on their feelings and their beliefs. And it is very hard to change someone's worldview, but you can help change their biases and their beliefs a little bit and then make them feel something. And then potentially they may change their feelings about working with you and what they believe. So um, there's lots of different examples of this, but you want to tap into people's feelings first, and then that will change their biases and beliefs possibly. And then maybe you have a chance of changing their worldview if you're going for something that's drastically different from what they believe now. But don't start, don't start initially trying to change their worldview. It will not work. It is a slippery slope downward. So you want to incrementally work towards helping them feel something which helps them shift their biases and their beliefs. And then they may shift their worldview into something dramatic. The ways that you can do that, and these are paths to engagement, are... I have a couple different social media channels here listed. There's a variety and they're always changing. So these are the three uh, the ways that you're gonna engage with people. You're gonna educate them. And the symbol is YouTube. So YouTube is a, the number two search engine in the world. And you wanna remember that when you're building YouTube videos, like are you gonna educate, entertain, or inspire people with what your videos are? Maybe they're tutorials, maybe they're webinars. Maybe they're just a product demonstration about what is your product or service do. Um, they're very good ways to share content. It lives on YouTube forever. So as you're building that, remember these videos live up there forever unless you delete them. Um, TikTok is the middle one. That's a great entertainment platform. So people use music and dance and we're seeing more and more brands and businesses get on platforms like TikTok and Snapchat and other ones like that, that short form content. That is more entertainment. So just to be clear, that is not a long form uh, platform. If you're gonna educate people, it's really for entertainment and engagement only. And then things like Instagram and Instagram stories on the right are great for inspiration, either visual inspiration or motivational inspiration. So you use all the different platforms and there's a variety here, obviously you haven't seen like LinkedIn and Twitter and, and, and Facebook's not listed here. Um, but these are just calling out a couple specific niche channels where if you understand how you want to communicate with people, you want to leverage that social channel for that um, goal. So a good question is, well, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to share about? So, and I, I use this as an example, when you go to a museum or a gallery, like what is on the walls? This is the curator of your museum and you're the curator of your museum. So what is the art you're going to put on the walls? And that comes back to your branding and about the voice and the type of topics you want to talk about. And if you don't have a lot of content getting started, it is okay. This is our 80-20 rule. And you can see the 80-20 rule used in a variety of different ways around the world. Um, a lot of things basically on 80-20 is about 80% of your efforts, or sorry, 20% of your efforts will yield 80% of your results. So it's really important to figure out, well, what is that 20% that's yielding 80% of your results? So if you look at clients or customers, you know, 20% of your customers might be producing 80% of your revenue. So what is that, who are those 20% of your customers or clients or products that are working and figure out what's working and focus on those. As far as from a content perspective, let's take a five day week, Monday through Friday, um, You've got five days, so one of those days, 20% of those five days, I want you to talk about yourself, your services, your specials, maybe yourself as a leader, or maybe events you're hosting, either webinars or other events that you can host right now. 
Um, but 80% of the time, it's okay to share other people's content, OPC, because as you're getting started, you're not gonna have a lot of content. What you wanna do here is share educational, inspirational, helpful, value-driven content. And you wanna add your insight. Um, why am I sharing this with you? The example I always give people is, you know, if you're recommending books to people and restaurants to eat at and movies to watch, you didn't create those movies. You didn't build those restaurants and those menus and write those books, but you're sharing it. So that's the OPC. That's other people's content that they've created, but you're telling them, why do I think this is a great book for you to read? Why do I think this is a restaurant you will love? And it's something that you should go check out. So those are the reasons why it's okay. And you're always, of course, sharing um, attribution and why and where did the source of this content come from? That's a given. You're always saying, I didn't write this content. This isn't my content. And you're giving source back to the original credit. That's just a given. And so always mention who's the original source and never um, copy and pretend that this is coming from you. Step five is sharing for syndication. Okay, so you want to share and not, you want to, sorry, syndicate, and not share. Sharing is a one-to-one. -one. If I'm going to give a friend a book, I'm going to share it with them, right? Here's one book. I want you to read it. And now that book is in that person's hand. Syndication is different. Now, let's say I have an ebook of the same book. I can send that to 100 people by syndicating a digital asset, okay? I can send, say, here's, here's an ebook, and I want all of you to read it. And that's called syndication because you're sharing it to multiple people at once through a digital platform. So the, the reasons why we want to do this, because of course it increases time and speed. And I use, a, I use a tool called Buffer to share content, which shares to all your different social channels that you want to link, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, even Pinterest boards, uh, and Instagram through Buffer. So you take a piece of content and you time release it um, through Buffer and things like that. Now you want to share curated content, of course. So curated content goes back to that museum and that art gallery. What are the content pieces that you want to share? 20% can be yours, 80% can be other people's, and eventually that will inverse, excuse me, and over time you will have more content and you'll be sharing less and less from other people's content. And obviously you can use tools like social media, um, like Hootsuite to manage your social media channels. Um, to see what's working and what's getting more likes and follows and reactions and engagement. And that helps guide you, oh, this video did well, this article did well, this photo did well. Um, and then the things that aren't working, maybe that I should change my strategy. So again, you're, you're thinking about how do I want to share? What do I want to share? And then I want to look at the results of how did it perform when I did share it? So it's really that holistic model of the, the who, the what, the where, and then going back and then doing it again once you have some data behind it. The challenges for leaders right now are it's a confusing path. Um, becoming a thought leader can be a bit elusive and it's a little bit blurry. Like people don't know how to get to that process. So what we're trying to do here is really establish, well, how do I become a thought leader um, in my own respect because it can be a little, so hopefully part of the process we've already discussed um, has helped clarify that for you. And that takes us right to the course that we've built and the process that we work with clients, which we call Break On Through. It was inspired by Jim Morrison, the singer, songwriter, poet, artist, entertainer from The Doors who unfortunately died way too young um, at age 28. And you know, when I came time to name a program, that came back to my personal brand of who do I believe in. And, you know, Jim Morrison was a huge impact on me at a young age. And if you end up doing the course, you will see that I've infected and injected Jim Morrison into every aspect of the course. It is not just me on the course. The course is myself and different clients and colleagues I've worked with. So Brandon Peel was a uh, purpose guide that I worked with years ago and has become a great close personal friend of mine and mentor of mine. So he helps you get through the purpose perspective and the part of the course and his aspects of how do we discover our own purpose. Uh, Stephanie Steidel is a, is, uh, runs a company called The Right Brain Entrepreneur. She's a business strategist and coach. So she helps you get on target and on time for how do we create process and development to keep things moving forward. 
um, if you want to help develop your brand, we work with Geraldine Convento and um, her company and helping you define your brand as a brand strategist. And we have an amazing, uh, when Des Danielle Leslie was getting started, she is now a mega course expert developer into the multi, multi millions. And she has done so amazingly. And she is also an expert on the course with us. So I'm so thankful that we've been able to have Danielle Leslie uh, be part of the course. It is a six fold path. So as I mentioned, it's a six week process into thought leadership. We've named them bricks. So each week is a brick. Uh, again, it goes back to the brand. So you start with a thought leadership exploration with Brandon and myself. In week two, we go into that personal brand with Geraldine in the discovery process. Week three, we start crafting an online world with myself. I show you how do you craft your online world. Brick four, we start curating that content for growth again with myself. And we interview the experts and they share their strategies and insights with you during different weeks of the course. Brick five, again, I tackle that with how do you syndicate your work out to the world? And then brick six, we talk about launching into leadership with Danielle and Stephanie Steidel um, about how do we launch? How do we create a process into launching into leadership? During the six week process, you have three one-on-ones with myself as Zoom or video calls, however you wanna do it. Um, and then you also have Zoom meetings if we're in a group or cohort, if you're part of a cohort. So it's every other week, you have either a group Zoom or a one-on-one -on -one with myself as part of the course. So if you're interested in the course, you can go to bhmedia.co slash BOT. You can sign up um, for the course or you can just get an invitation to book a call with myself so that you can decide, is this the right thing for you? Is this the moment for you to change the game? And I encourage you to just book a call if you're curious about it, if you have questions, my link to my calls is right there and you can book a free discovery call right there on my website. And I encourage you to just to say, hey, is this the right thing for me? I, I, of course, even if you don't think it's the right time, you're welcome to keep my website and my link. And just if, it, if the time arises or changes for you, you just get in touch with me when it's the right time. I never know for people what's the right time for them. And so I always want to give them the opportunity to just say, hey, now is the right time for me. And I want to get involved now. So I hope that was really helpful for you. I'm gonna stay on for questions after the fact of the webinar and we can take questions live about your brand and any questions you have about what we talked about. And we can go back through some of the slides if you have questions, but really it's about stepping into that leadership role, breaking on through, being bold, being courageous, um, finding value for yourself and finding valuable ways to support other people with the work that you do. Thank you for your time. Stay well out there. And again, I'm going to stay on for questions afterwards. Thank you.